In the previous lecture, we have discussed about round robin scheduling and we have also taken a small example and have seen how it works. So, in this lecture, we will be solving another problem on round robin scheduling. So, let us see what is this problem. So, here it says consider the set of five processes whose arrival time and burst time are given below. If the CPU scheduling policy is a round robin with time quantum equals to two units, calculate the average waiting time and average turnaround time. So here in this problem, we are given a set of five processes with process IDs P1 to P5 and their arrival times are given here and the burst times are given here. So we are required to find the average waiting time and the average turnaround time if the scheduling policy is round robin and the time quantum is two units. So this is a little bit different from the previous example that we have discussed in the previous lecture because in the previous lecture, the arrival times were not given and it was assumed that all the processes arrived at the same time. So it was a bit easy to calculate. But in this example or in this problem, the arrival times also are given for the set of processes. So we have to keep in mind these arrival times and there are many things that we have to keep in mind and be very attentive when we are solving this problem of this kind. So this is going to be a bit lengthy because I am going to explain in detail about how it works. So that is why I have divided this lecture into two parts. So in this first part, we will be seeing how we can form the GAN chart for this set of five processes, which is the most crucial step. And in the next part, we will be calculating the average waiting time and the average turnaround time. So keep in mind that this is a round robin scheduling and we know that in round robin scheduling, each process is allowed to execute for a particular time quantum, which is two units in this case. And after the time quantum, the process will be preempted. After that, the CPU will be given to the next process waiting in the queue. And this pattern continues. So that is what happens in round robin scheduling. So since the arrival times also are given here, there are many things that we need to keep in mind and we have to solve it very attentively. So it is not very difficult, but you have to be very careful. So let's see how we can form the GAN chart for this set of five processes. So I've copied down the same table over here. And here keep in mind that the time quantum is two units. And here I am having a clock which will help us to keep track of the time and see what happens at different time units. So you don't have to draw this clock and all when you are really solving the problem. But in order to make you understand, I am taking this example. So let's see how the GAN chart can be formed. So here I have formed the GAN chart for this set of processes. And don't worry looking at this, I'm going to explain it in detail. And also we are having a ready queue here. So in this ready queue, we will be putting the processes that are coming and waiting in the ready queue. So that will be represented here. So remember that this right hand side will represent the head of the queue and the left hand side will be the tail of the queue. So when the first process arrives, it will be kept here. And when the second process arrives, it will be kept behind that. And when the third process arrives, it will be kept behind that and so on. So that is what we mean by the head and the tail of the queue. So let us see how all these things work. So first of all, let's look at this table and let's see what happens at different units of time. So in this clock, we will be starting from the zeroth unit of time. So at time zero, let's see what happens. So at time zero, the process P1 arrives. So here we see that P1 is the first process to arrive. So P1 is the process that comes and waits in the ready queue because it is the first process and it is ready to be executed. So at time zero, process P1 comes and it is ready to be executed. And since there were no other processes at this time, so what will happen? P1 will be given the CPU. So P1 will be now coming to our GAN chart, which shows that it got the CPU and it has begun its execution. So we can remove P1 from the ready queue because in the ready queue, the processes will be there when they are waiting for the CPU. But once they get the CPU, they will not be in the ready queue anymore. So P1 is removed from the ready queue and it is now continuing its execution in the CPU. Now let's see what will happen next. So here we were at time zero. Now let's go to the next unit of time. So the next unit of time is time one. So let's see what happens at time one. So at time one, P1 is still continuing its execution. We know that the time quantum is two units. So P1 has not completed two units. It is still within the time quantum of two units because we are just at time one. So P1 continues its execution. Now let's see what happens in this table. So in this table, we see that at time one, P2 has arrived. So 
P2 is arriving at time 1 but it cannot be given the CPU at this time because P1 is currently using the CPU and has not completed its time quantum of 2 units. So what will happen? P2 will be placed in the ready queue. So we have P2 in our ready queue now. So that is all that happens at time 1. Now let's see what will happen at the next unit of time. So the next unit of time is time 2. So at time 2 what happens? There is an alarm ringing. So why does the alarm ring? The alarm rings because we know that the time quantum is 2 units. So the ringing of his alarm signifies that the time quantum has ended and it is time to preempt the currently executing process and it is time to give the CPU to the next process waiting in the ready queue. So that is what we have to do. So at time 2, P1 will be preempted and P2 will be given the CPU because P2 is the process that is waiting at the head of the ready queue. So that is what we have to do at time 2. Now when P1 is preempted, what is the remaining burst time of P1? Even that we have to keep in mind. So the burst time of P1 is 5 units of time and here it has executed for 2 units of time. So there is a remaining of 3 units of time that P1 needs to execute. So P1 has not completed its execution. So keep that in mind. And since P1 has also not completed its execution, P1 will also be now placed in the ready queue. So shall we place P1 here? Wait, before we place P1 here, let us also look if there were any other processes that has arrived at time 2. So if you see the table, we see that P3 also has arrived at time 2. So P3 will be placed at the ready queue and after that, this P1 which was preempted will be placed behind that. So P2 will be now removed from the ready queue because it is now going to get the CPU for its execution. So let's remove P2 and place the other two processes. So this is what our ready queue looks like now. P2 got the CPU and is going to begin its execution and P3 which has arrived at 2 units of time is placed at the head of the ready queue and P1 which was preempted now and has a remaining burst time of 3 units of time is placed behind P3 and the ready queue. So this is what happens at time 2. So P2 will now begin its execution. Now let's see what will happen at the next unit of time. So the next unit of time is 3 units. So at 3 units let's see what happens. So at 3 P2 is still continuing its execution because it has not yet completed 2 units. It can actually execute from 2 to 4 units of time. So at time 3, P2 is still executing. And let's see our table, what happens in this table. We see that there is a new process, P4, that has arrived at time 3. So at 3 units of time, P4 has arrived and P4 has to be placed at the ready queue. Because right now, this GAN chart cannot be disturbed because P2 is executing and it has not completed its time quantum. So P4 will now be placed at the ready queue. So P4 is now placed at the tail of the ready queue and this is what our ready queue looks like at time 3. Now let's see what will happen at the next unit of time. So the next unit of time is time 4. So at 4 unit of time what happens? The alarm rings again. Why did the alarm ring? Because the time quantum of 2 units are complete. So from 2 to 4 the clock ran and that was 2 units of time. So the alarm rings which signifies that the process that is currently executing should be preempted and the CPU should be given to the next process waiting in the ready queue. So which was the process executing? It was P2. P2 was the one using the CPU and at time 4 P2 has to be now preempted and the next process should be given the CPU. So now which is the next process that should be given the CPU? We have to see the ready queue. So in the ready queue P3 is at the head of the ready queue. So P3 will be given the CPU and P2 will be preempted. Now when this happens, what is the remaining burst time of P2? Let's see. The burst time or the total burst time of P2 is 3 units of time and it has executed for 2 units here. So there is a remaining of 1 unit. So P2 has a remaining of 1 unit of time which has to be executed later. So P2 also has to be placed at the end of the ready queue. But let's see if that is the case or if there were any other processes that arrived at time 4. So if you see at time 4 there is another process P5 that has arrived. So P5 also has to be placed at the end of the ready queue. So what we'll do is we'll first place P5 at the end of the ready queue and behind that we will be placing P2 which was preempted. 
So always remember that the process that is preempted will always be the last one in the queue. So we'll first place P5, then P2. And P3 is the one getting the CPU and going to begin its execution. So we can remove P3 from the ready queue. So this is what our ready queue will look like now. P3 is taken from the ready queue and it's put in the GAN chart because it is using the CPU for its execution. And P5 which has arrived at time 4 is kept at the ready queue and P2 which is preempted is also kept at the end of the ready queue. So this is what happens at time 4. Now let's see what will happen at the next unit of time that is 5 units. So at the 5th unit of time let's see what is happening. So if you look at the GAN chart P3 was a process that was executing. Now P3 got the CPU at 4 units at the previous unit and what is the burst time of P3? The burst time of P3 is only 1 unit of time. So it does not have to use for the total 2 units that is the time quantum but it only has to use for 1 unit of time. So at time 5 P3 will complete its execution and it will voluntarily release the CPU and the CPU will be given to the next process in the queue that is P1. P1 is at the head of the queue so P1 will be the one to get the CPU. So here the alarm is not going to ring because the time quantum of 2 units were not complete and the burst time of P3 was only 1 unit of time which is less than the time quantum. So P3 voluntarily releases the CPU and then gives the CPU to the next process in the queue that is P1. So we can remove P1 from the ready queue and put it in the GAN chart again. So P1 is now getting the CPU and it's continuing its execution. So how long does it have to continue? It can continue for only 2 units but also remember that it has a remaining of 3 units of time. So P1 continues its execution and let's see what happens in the next unit of time. So the next unit of time is 6. So at the 6th unit what happens? There are no new processes that are arriving and P1 is using the CPU and P1 needs to use it for 3 units of time but is allowed for only 2 units which is the time quantum and the time quantum has also not yet expired because P1 started this execution at 5 units and it will actually be allowed to execute up to 7 units. 5 plus 2 is 7. So at the 6th unit of time nothing much happens it's just P1 continuing its execution and these processes still waiting in the ready queue. Now let's go to the next unit of time. Now the next unit of time is 7 units and at 7 unit the alarm rings. Now why does it ring? Because P1 was using the CPU for 5 up to 7. 2 units that is the time quantum is complete. So the alarm rings notifying that the present process has to be preempted and the next process should be given the CPU. So P1 will now be preempted and the next process that is P4 will be given the CPU because P4 is the one at the head of the ready queue. So that is what will happen. Now did P1 finish its execution? Let's see. P1 had a remaining burst time of 3 units of time but it has executed only for 2 units here. So still there is a remaining of 1 unit of time that P1 needs to execute. So P1 will again be put at the end of the ready queue because it still has to use a CPU. So P4 we can remove it from the ready queue now because it will get the CPU here and P1 which was preempted will be kept at the end of the ready queue. So this is what our ready queue looks like now. P4 is taken from the ready queue and put into the GAN chart because it is going to begin its execution and P1 which was preempted is put at the end of the ready queue. So P4 now begins its execution and it will have to execute for how long? The burst time of P4 is 2 units of time. So anyway let's see what will happen at the next unit of time. So the next unit of time is 8 and at 8 we see that there are no processes newly arriving and also the present process that is executing is P4 which has to execute for 2 units of time and at the 8th unit of time it has completed only 1 unit of its execution and it has to execute for another 1 more unit of time. So there is nothing much happening here. It is just P4 doing its execution and these processes waiting in the queue. So let's go to the next unit of time now. So at the next unit of time that is at the ninth unit the alarm rings again. Why? Because the CPU was used from 7 to 9 units that is 2 units here. So the time quantum is complete and the alarm rings and the process that was using the CPU that is P4 has to be preempted. So if you see here we also see that the burst time of P4 is also 2 units of time. So even though it is not preempted also it was going to release the CPU anyway after 2 units of time. So P4 has completed its execution and P4 will release the CPU now and the CPU will be given to the next process and what is the next process? The next process is 
P5. So P5 is the one waiting in ready queue now. So P5 will be given the CPU and the remaining process here will continue to wait at the ready queue. So P5 is removed from the ready queue and it is now in the GAN chart beginning its execution. So remember P5 also needs to execute for 3 units of time that is its burst time. So the other processes P3 we see that P3 already completed and P4 also we saw that it already completed. So let's just strike them out. So at time 9 what will happen? P5 got the CPU and it is beginning its execution. So now let's go to the next unit. So the next unit is 10. At 10 units of time what happens? We see P5 is continuing its execution. It is still within the time quantum. So there is nothing new happening. P5 is continuing its execution and there are no other processes that arrives. So nothing much is happening. Only P5 is continuing its execution at time unit 10. So let's proceed to the next unit. So the next unit of time is 11. So at the 11th unit of time the alarm rings again. Why? Because the CPU was used from 9 to 11 that is 2 units that is a time quantum. So the alarm rings notifying that the present process has to be preempted. So which was the present process? It was P5. So P5 will be preempted and the CPU should be given to the next process in the ready queue and which is that? It is P2 which is at the head of the ready queue. Now P5 did it complete its execution? No, because the burst time of P5 was 3 units of time and it has only executed for 2 units. So there is a remaining of 1 unit that P5 has to execute later on. So P5 will be put at the end of the ready queue and P2 will get the CPU so P2 can be removed from our ready queue. So this is what our ready queue will look like now. P2 went here to the GAN chart and P5 that was preempted is kept at the end of the ready queue. So at time 11 P2 that got the CPU now will begin its execution. So let's see what will happen at the next unit of time. So the next unit of time is 12 units. So at 12 units what happens? So at 12 units we see that P2 was executing and we see that P2's remaining burst time was only 1 unit of time. So from 11 to 12 P2 executed and it took less than the time quantum. So there is no alarm going off but P2 has completed its execution and will voluntarily release the CPU. So P2 here has completed its execution. Alright, so what is the next process? The next process is P1 that is waiting at the head of the ready queue. So P1 will now be given the CPU. So P1 is removed from the ready queue and put in the GAN chart because P1 gets the CPU for its execution. And let's see what will happen at the next unit of time now. So the next unit of time is time 13. So what happens at time 13? Who was using the CPU? P1. And what was the remaining burst time of P1? It was only one unit of time. So P1 executes for one unit and at the 13th unit it completes its execution. So the execution of P1 is complete and it took less than the time quantum of two units. So there is no alarm going off in our clock. So P1 will voluntarily release the CPU at the 13th unit of time and will give the CPU to the last process that is waiting in our ready queue that is P5. So P5 will now get the CPU at the 13th unit of time. And how long it has to execute? It has to execute for only one unit. So P5 is removed from the ready queue and it comes to the GAN chart and it gets the CPU for its execution. So at the next unit of time, that is at the 14th unit, P5 will complete its execution because it has a remaining burst time of only one unit of time. So P5's execution is also complete at the 14th unit of time and there are no more processes waiting in the ready queue which signifies that all of the processes has completed their execution. So even if you look at this table we see that there are no more processes that needs to be executed because all their burst times are complete and there are no processes in the ready queue. So at the 14th unit of time all of the processes completed their execution. So this is how you can form the GAN chart for a set of processes that follow round robin scheduling and when the arrival times are given. Given in the sense when there is a different arrival time. So when they are having the same arrival time you don't have to keep these many things in mind. But when the arrival times are different you need to keep all these things in mind. So keeping all these things in mind if you can form the GAN chart then the rest of the process will become very easy. So I hope this formation of GAN chart for this round robin scheduling when arrival times are given is clear to you. So thank you for watching and in the next part we will be calculating the average waiting time and the average turnaround time for the same set of processes for the same problem. So see you in the next one.